Hi, we meet again on chapter 15, 444 KSSM, that is on reproduction, development and growth in humans and animals. And for form 5 KBSM, it is under chapter 4, reproduction and growth. For the content standard for form 4 KSSM, it is under 15.1. Reproductive system of humans and 15.2 gametogenesis in humans. As for the learning standard, it is under 15.1.1 characterize the anatomy of the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system. 15.2.1 justify the necessity of gametogenesis. For the KBSM Form 5, the learning objective is under 4.1, Gamut Formation. The learning outcome are, the first one is explain the necessity for organism to reproduce. Second one, state types of reproduction. Third, explain the necessity for formation of gametes. Well, why is it necessary for the organism to reproduce? It is for the continuation of the species. Species is dependent on the increase in population through the process of sexual or asexual reproduction. These are the types of reproduction. Reproduction can be divided into two, that is sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. For asexual reproduction, it can further divide it into binary fission, spore formation, budding, vegetative reproduction, and regeneration. Now, into sexual reproduction. What is sexual reproduction? By sexual reproduction, it can produce new individuals by living organisms using the sex cells, what we call as gametes that are ovum and sperms. It involves the production of male and female gametes, like what I have men mentioned just now, that are ovum and sperm, by individuals who have reached sexual maturity. This process is completed with fertilization of both gametes to create new life. Now, we look at the female reproductive system. We look at the uterus and fallopian tube first. Okay, going to the uterus. This part is your uterus. So uterus is an organ with thick muscular wall. You can see the wall. They are thick. The inner wall of the uterus is lined with endometrium tissue which secretes mucus and rich in blood vessel. This is the inner part. Of your uterus and the embryo will implant in the endometrium. The endometrium tissue which is thick and rich with the blood vessel will supply the embryo with the nutrient and oxygen. Next we go to the fallopian tube. There are two fallopian tubes for each woman. Fallopian tube is a thin muscular tube. The inner wall of the fallopian tube is lined with the cilia. And the action of the cilium, that is the singular for cilia, combined with the peristalsis of the fallopian tube helps to deliver the secondary oocyte or your ovum or embryo to the uterus. Next, we look at the vagina. Vagina is a canal where the sperm enter. So that is the first function. And vagina also serves as a passage for birth. The second function. And the third function, it is also the passage for your menstruation to come out. Next is the cervix. This part is the cervix. Cervix is a narrow opening to your uterus, remember that part is your uterus, which will secrete mucus to help the sperm to swim up to your fallopian tube. 
Next one is the ovary. So you have two ovary for the female. So it is a female reproductive organ that can pr produce the, the ovum. That is the female gamete. Or sometimes you will see the word ova. Ova is the plural for ovum. And ovary also produce the female sex hormone that are estrogen and progesterone. Now we look at the main reproductive system. We start from scrotum. Okay, scrotum, you can see this picture here. The scrotum is a sac like structure that holds and protects the testes. So now we go inside the scrotum where you can find testes. Testes is located in the scrotum. So testes, the function is to produce sperm. Testes also produce male hormones, that is testosterone. From the testes, the sperm that is being produced will be transported via sperm duct or known as was deference. Along the way, that is also seminal vesicle. Seminal vesicle, the function is to secrete fluid that is filled with nutrient for the sperm. And there is also prostate gland. Prostate gland also secrete fluids, but the fluid will help for the movement of sperm. Now, after that, after the sperm duct, the sperm will reach urethra. Urethra is a tube for the discharge of sperm. And remember, your urine will also use the same tube that is urethra. And finally, it will reach your penis. Penis is the male sexual organ that are rich in soft tissue and blood vessels. Penis also release sperm into the female vagina during copulation. Gametogenesis. What is gametogenesis? Gametogenesis is a process to produce reproductive cells or gametes that are ovum and sperm. The process will take place in the gonads. What are the gonads? The gonad is testes in males and ovaries in females. So gametogenesis will happen in testes for males and ovary for females. And this gametogenesis will produce gametes that are haploid. How can we get the haploid cell? Remember, we have just learned about meiosis. So when fertilization takes place, the nucleus of the sperm will fuse with the nucleus of the ovum that is haploid and haploid in the fallopian tube to form a diploid zygote, that is 2N. Do you want to know the process of gametogenesis in males and females? Well, stay tuned for my next video. Or if you cannot wait, you can read in your textbook first. Thank you and stay safe. Click the link of the quiz on this topic which is given in the info section. Bye!